I am a rat, said Roscuro. Again, said Botticelli, swinging his locket. I am a rat. Exactly, said Botticelli. A rat is a rat is a rat. End of story. World without end. Amen. Yes, said Roscuro. Amen. I am a rat. He closed his eyes. He saw again the red cloth spinning against the backdrop of gold, and he told himself, reader, that it was the cloth that he desired and not the light. With lines like that, how could you not love The Tale of Despero by Kate D. Camillo? I'm Carly, and I could talk about Kate D. Camillo's award-winning books all day long, but for now I'll just tell you about some of the great reasons why I love The Tale of Despero personally and why I also love to read it to students. Obviously, it's a Newbery award winner, and what I love about Kate D. Camillo's books is that she has this way of beautifully treating these mature themes without going over children's heads and without seeming inappropriate or even pushing boundaries. She just unveils new ideas to kids in, in beautiful literary ways. So one of the things I like about this book is the way that it begins with drama. Um, this baby mouse, Despero, is born, and he's little, and he's not like the others, and so he's cast away to the dungeon. Eventually he falls in love with a princess and, and, and saves the whole kingdom from their sadness, and it's, it's quite a tale. Um, but it begins with this mouse being born, and... His mother says, Mon Dieu, just the one mouse baby? All of that work for nothing. And so it's a great opportunity to use voices for students. It's a lot of, a, it's a lot of fun. Um, one of the things I really appreciate about the way that she writes is that she talks directly to the reader in this book. She says, The last one, said his father, and he'll be dead soon. He can't live, not with his eyes open like that. But reader, he did live. This is his story. And so this is the story of Despero and... I loved sitting wide-eyed and watching kids do the same thing. Thematically, she, um, like I said, just has a beautiful way of addressing um, themes in a, that, in a manner that's also accessible for kids. Um, so she talks about the theme of love, and she says, Reader, you may ask this question. In fact, you must ask this question. Is it ridiculous for a very small, sickly, big-eared mouse to fall in love with a beautiful human princess named P? The answer is... Yes. Of course it's ridiculous. Love is ridiculous, but love is also wonderful and powerful. And Despero's love for the Princess P would prove in time to be all of these things, powerful, wonderful, and ridiculous. And what couldn't be said about love um, that isn't powerful, wonderful, and ridiculous? So I love that she makes that um, available to kids um, in, in sort of a fun and yet insightful way. Um, Another way that she deals with vocabulary is a lot of fun. It, here's an example from um, the first book. At least Lester had the decency to weep at his act of perfidy. Reader, do you know what perfidy means? I have a feeling you do, based on the little scene that has just unfolded here. But you should look up in the word to your dictionary just to be sure. So if you ever want to get kids excited about vocabulary, weave it into a story with context that makes sense to them. Um, the way the book is organized is into book the first, book the second, which is a very formal sort of fantastical way of organizing books. And um, this, the villain in the story is Roscuro from the beginning, but in Italian it's chiaroscuro, which is actually a painting term for shading and darkness. So I love that reference. Um, and then I just love the way that she plays with suspense in ways that are exciting to adult readers and children too. She says... If the rat had not looked over his shoulder, perhaps his heart would not have broken. And it is possible then that I would not have a story to tell. But reader, he did look. So she keeps leaving kids and, and adults on the edge of their seat. And the book is so beautiful. When I was in high school, I had a teacher who said that the best literature shows how dark the world can be, but also then shows how it can be redeemed. And I was impressed to find that a book that is attainable for third and fourth graders is is totally capable of doing that. So one of my personal recommendations, one of my favorites, one of the ones that I love to read again and again and um, love to share with students as a, as a treasure, and it's The Tale of Despero.